That's what I like. You're very a lot of bros. That's nice. You're a lot of like straight men friends. Yeah. That's nice. And it is. I'm They're not good. around them much. Oh. <laughs> They're good. We'll we'll get into that too. <laughs> so we're just gonna roll right in. Okay. What's up, everybody? I'm Joe Longo. This is 30 Days of Inspiration. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna mess up her name because she said I said it the right way before. I'm in Natalie Levin's house. He said it right. We're in the kitchen. And we totally <laughs> did some fun photos and had the Colonel. That's right. Oh, we did. We did. And some Coca-Cola yeah. and wine and beer. <laughs> because we can. Yeah. And we can be yogis and do that as well. Yeah. So, Natalie and I have already been having a great conversation. And I figured I should just hit record and we can kind of keep going. Yeah. Um, but we've been talking about parallel universes yeah. and Fringe, oh. old television show. Oh. It's J.J. Abrams. Yeah, yes. It's J.J. Abrams. I think it's right after uh, Alias. Right. Which Cheryl had me watch the whole thing. Cheryl's my wife. And um, I also wanted to, I was telling you um, that <clears throat> I just came upon this astrologer. Her name's Meru Matu. And she is a walk-in. Like, she is from another galaxy. Mm -hmm. And she came into her body at, like, age 21. And she reads your chart and tells you what galaxy your soul is from. Oh, wow. <laughs> I That's haven't had a reading with I haven't had a reading with her yet, which is so cool. And so through her, I found this um, group online <clears throat> on Facebook if you're on Facebook. It's called the Cosmic Den mm -hmm. and I there's only like 40 people in it. And in there, it's like, oh yeah, I remember all my past lives. Uh, oh, we just jumped universes. Um, they call it timeline hopping. So yeah. Have you I heard, of that? heard of that? No. Hopping and the hopping using glasses of water. Is that? Uh, this is probably. I'm just learning about it. What's? I just heard about it yesterday. Uh, oh my so god. Here's I a quick. Both. Here's like a quick tutorial <laughs> on. I think hopping with water. So you would take two glasses of water. Mm. And you remember the whole ice crystal water yes. thing? Yes, you, like you give it that, praise and you're like, I love you, oh water, and yes. it makes a beautiful crystal. Yes. Versus. So it's like you take, so you take these two cups of water and one of them you put on like your reality right now. Yeah. And the, the way that the guy that I saw, he wanted to have like 500 million downloads or a million downloads. It was a YouTube okay. guy. <coughs> so he wanted more, I think he wanted a million downloads. And he's currently at 50,000 downloads or something okay. like that. So on the one glass of water, he put 50,000 downloads. On the other glass of water, he put a million downloads. Okay. And he was like, what you do is you take <coughs> the reality that you're currently in, the, the 50,000, yes. and then the water from the million yeah. downloads that you want, and you pour that million in to the 50,000, okay. and then you drink that. It was really, I never saw anything about this time hopping, but I'm like, that's interesting. <laughs> but there was so much work done with the whole crystallization and the waters, and we were talking earlier about the Hydron Collider and oh bumping gosh. us into a different universe. It's definitely happened. So, then do you think that we're in a simulation, or well, like the whole Elon Musk theory that we are living in? A matrix. Yeah, like we're, just we are like us. I like do. A, I actually think we're in a holographic um, projection right mm -hmm. now. Our souls. Some people can see. I feel like I'm starting to be able to see more. Like, you're you're this beautiful energy being soul that happens to be in this physical f flesh suit, mm -hmm. and um, that we actually have known each other forever, and. Um, this particular matrix that we're in right now is helping our souls to evolve and grow mm -hmm. that I think we chose to come into this matrix at this time to evolve and grow for whatever reason and it's a particularly difficult one right <laughs> the, yes. the, trying to read I talked about this the other day trying to remember <clears throat> Are you familiar with the Neil Donald Walsh books, Conversations with God? Yes, yes. So in the first book, he talks a lot about remembering and that we just need to remember where we come from. Mm -hmm. You know, like that state of pure love yes. and bliss. Yes. And that we've forgotten yeah. where, like, our true love and our true yes. bliss and, like, that that's what we come from. And we just have to remember. But it's like we've gone through so many 
incarnations that we forgot. Oh, yeah. That we come from that state of pure bliss. Yes. It's like, how do we remember? And really remembering, do we come from this? Do we come from something else? Do we come from outer space? Some other galaxy? Some other dimension? All of the, yes, to all right? of that. Actually, it's so mind bending. <laughs> This feels very much like a Piscean conversation. Joe and I are both Pisces. Right, yes. This is, I am, I am making up that a story that a lot of people, maybe who are watching this, might think it's a little wacky. And when, I'm te when I talk about this, like, and sometimes I'll talk about this a little bit when I'm teaching a class, and I'll say, take what you like and leave the rest mm -hmm. about what I'm saying. Um, Pisces is the ultimate, the grand finale of the whole zodiac sign of... Um, so <laughs> it's not even water. It's thought to be a water sign. It's actually ether. Mm. Steam. It makes so much more sense. Yeah, right? So that's where we are. Mm -hmm. So for us to talk about that kind of stuff feels very comfortable. A lot of people who are not, don't have a lot of Pisces in their charts might feel like can't, it doesn't, they can't fall into that. So right. They were just talking way too woo woo. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I know, the thing is that I know that you, and I both know how to do the stuff of the of being incarnate. Like we know how to be business people. We know how to like be grown ups and make sure we are eating and hydrated and sleeping and we seem to have somewhat successful interpersonal skills. So we know how to do that. Mm -hmm. But what my experience of myself is, and I wonder if you relate to this, is that overarching is this like observer of This is just a little blip on a blip. My, my life is a blip of my soul's eternal mm -hmm. existence. Yes. And that makes it a little bit easier for me to be in these times. You, what about for you? Yeah, I was actually thinking that today, that it's like sometimes I do feel like I'm floating around watching. And with the photography and video stuff, for the longest time, I've literally been saying, I'm just a professional observer. Yeah. And that's, and I'm, I'm capturing it, but literally I'll be walking down the street and be like, that would be a great picture. That would be a, but I'm always observing. And I feel like I'm a photographer, but really I am a professional observer. Like that. You are. What I'm doing. Um, but I can easily float off into somewhere else yeah. and kind of remove myself from this reality, yeah. which has been helping me get through the last year, I guess. The difficult times. Yeah. And it's, it's, I hate to say that it's difficult times, because it is also, an, it's amazing as well. Uh, the astrologers are saying this is an incredibly amazing time to be a human being on this mm -hmm. planet. Like, if you think about everything that we can do, and everything that's available to us. Just so much that we can do just on our telephone. Oh, yes. You know, and sure, we're all sucked in and we're all addicted. It's totally. okay. <laughs> I'm actually going to bring up Joe's chart right now. Honestly. But everything that we can do with the phone, like there's more power in the phone than was in the first rocket to put people on the moon. I'm Which totally, I, is, it's amazing. I actually feel, this is, um, it's, the phone and the internet has been talked about as another dimension of being like we are um, astral traveling through mm -hmm. the through the internet the problem with it is it's so disjointed and the timelines are um, our beings are not actually programmed or developed at this time to process information as fast as it comes to us via the internet via this phone via the text mm -hmm. and so I think that for me, at least, it results in a lot of feeling of overwhelm. Yeah, so um, it's very easy to get super overwhelmed. Super overwhelmed. It. And figuring out a way to, to pull back yes. from it, but also still stay connected to it. Because I think we use it a lot for our, our business, like for the things oh, yes. that we do. Like, I, it's my office, you know. It's like your office. I log into Facebook and it's my office. It's where I'm communicating with clients. It's where I'm getting new clients. It's the same with Instagram. You're so Pisces, by the way. 
Can I talk about your chart a little bit? So I gave Natalie all my information about my chart, and we're going to have a little you chat have, about it. Just a little it. bit. He is the sun in Pisces, so we know that. And you also have a Pisces rising, which is how you present to the world. I always experience you as quite Piscean mm -hmm. in general. Like, I'm never surprised that you're Pisces. So you have already, I think the most, the three most important aspects of a person's chart are your moon, mm -hmm. your sun, and your rising. You have sun in Pisces, rising Pisces, but your moon is in fiery Sagittarius, oh. which is um, the teacher. Joe is a Kundalini teacher, by the way, P.S. <laughs> and in addition to other, I'm sure you teach other things. And the moon is your inner world. Oh, the timer. Oh, that was 10 so, minutes. We're going to take a hot break. <laughs> okay. But we're back. Just oh. that easy. Oh, we are? No, oh, sorry. Yeah. Do you need me to time it again? Yeah, sure. Okay. Just so we can be close. So we're back. We took a little break to set, reset the cameras, and we're talking about my chart. We're talking about Joe's chart. Um, and so he, this Sagittarius moon that he has, it, it, you're, um, you, you love freedom. You enjoy traveling. Um, somewhat. Is that I, I, I have a love hate for it. Well, that's because of your Pisces is sensitive and you need to go into your cave sometimes. Right. Like I really need my cave. It's a, yeah. But I love being out as well. Yes. You, it's a, it's, um, conflicting energies. Please. Yes. Please do tell me. So, if, um, like I feel, so when I was just in California yeah. and I was only, not only if it seems long, I was gone for like 10 days and I could not wait to get home. <laughs> Just to yes. be alone, like no, literally, you, just to. You have a lot of Pisces. You also have Neptune, which is the planet that is dreams, art. Uh, it rules um, expansive, going off into the ethers, mm -hmm. um, being able to understand that there's everything is infinite and it's cosmos. It's also the like Pisces is this energy of of the loner of going into a cave, of need, needing to meditate and be alone in, in Pratyahara. Mm -hmm. um, you have that, your Neptune is there, your Sun is there, your Rising is there, and your Chiron, which is the wounded healer. So it's the part of you that has these deep karmic wounds that come out and need to be healed. I imagine that part of the way you do that healing is, it, uh, is alone, actually. It is, but I have a very interesting story about that. Are you familiar with Paul Segal? I think that's how you say his name. Do you put videos of him up on Facebook? I think a while ago I did. I, I He's a, never... a channeler. He wrote oh, okay. a book called... Oh, what is the name of it? Thoth? No. <laughs> word I Am Word. Oh, no, I don't know. And it's all a channel. Oh. And when he receives his channeling, it's like someone is whispering in his ear, but he whispers and then he says it. And it's super quick. I think I've seen him... So he was going to be at a, at a yoga music festival that I was photographing a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. And they wanted me to go for the whole weekend, and I was just like, I can't. I don't, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But I'll come for a day. I was like, I really want to see Paul, so I'll come on the day that Paul was there. Yeah. There I can shoot the festival, I can listen to his talk, and win-win for everybody. Yeah. So uh, I go, and I'm walking around, and it turns out that I totally messed up, and I went on the wrong day. <laughs> I went the day before Paul was going to be there. Oh. But I'm walking around, and as I'm walking around, <coughs> I, I walk down this little, like, alley at this festival, and there's all these people standing around, and this woman just totally walks right up to me as I'm walking down, <coughs> and she's like, what are you doing? Like, nothing. Just taking pictures, and I'm here, you know, cause, to see Paul. And she's like, oh, you're staying over then? Are you camping? I'm like, no, he's here tonight. And she's like, no, oh. he's here tomorrow. And that's when I was like... Oh, oh, really? Yeah. So she put her hand on my back and she was like, do you mind if I put my hand on your <laughs> I'm glad I'm she like, asked. No, Because your body belongs to you. Right. right. <laughs> I always get permission. So she puts her hand like very lovingly on my back and she was like, you know, we're all channelers as well. And that's why we're here. We're here for the whole weekend. And she was like, this whole crew of us. She was like, and there was just something that made me want to come talk to you. Ah. Oh. So with her hand on my back, she was like, you know, you have to let go of all these daggers that are in your back. And I'm like, really? And I'm, you know, I'm uh, totally sad. I'm a weirdo. I believe all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, yeah, you've been hurt and you're like holding on and you just gotta, she was like, can I pull these daggers out? 
I was like, yeah, by all means, go right ahead. And I felt like this amazing weight lifted off. And all she did was just rub her hand on my back. You know, it's not like she like said any weird prayers or yeah. did really anything. It was just like, I just feel like I'm supposed to do this. And I'm like, then go for it, do it. And at first, you know, when she was like, oh, Paula's in here till tomorrow, I was instantly bummed. Like, yeah. oh, I totally missed it. But then at the end of our interaction, like I was totally supposed to be here yes. at this present time for that to happen. Yes. For whatever it was that she was removing, like I needed that little bit of healing that she was giving me. You and it was, it. yeah. And that was in a very, actually quite Piscean setting, this channeling and like, mm -hmm. you're in this place where people are connecting with other dimensions and other beings. Right. That, so that's your wounded healer being like, hey, I'm in Pisces, literally. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so interesting. You also, you also have your Venus, which is, Related to what what do you find attractive? It's in Aries, which is a fiery sign. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean people, mm -hmm. but you might like. <clears throat> I do notice that your photos have a lot, so much life in them, and they're so filled with color, and I love that about your photos, and it sticks out to me compared to the work that other people do in the, at least in yoga photography world. So I can really see how fire comes out, at least at least in the art you create. Mm. Um, Thank you. Yeah. It's interesting, because I've been, you know Noah, Julian. Oh, yeah. So Noah very, has this mystic side. But yeah. Like a, and I, I hate to say dark, because it's not, it's the only way I can really describe it. Mm. But there's, it's like a darker, there's like, you know the band Tool? Remember them back in the day? I probably was studying opera. Probably. <laughs> but so like Tool is this amazing band. They're still out there, but it, it's like the, a little bit darker okay. music, but still great music. And I feel Noah has that. Like ah. there's like this darker, like mystical side. Like exploring of him. the shadow side yeah. of, of mysticism. Yeah. So when we were talking about doing this and what kind of photos to create with Noah, I'm like, we can really like we don't have to go light and fluffy and like you doing a handstand. We can get, like we can go dark and like do that as well because even in the darkness there is the light. Like, yes. it's, like it's not a bad thing to be there. We need all of it. Yes. So that's what like we kind of tried to play around with a little more dark. Interesting. In I'm excited to see those photos. Yeah. They might be up already. I just missed yeah, them. Yeah. Okay. But it, and it's, it's interesting because it was kind of like a mess up with Noah, he was meditating, sitting on the floor, then I had him sitting on a stool meditating, and then also, so I did, we took three pictures and made it into one. So the one is just him sitting, then he's on the stool, so he's above himself. Uh. And then the third one, I turned the lens to give this effect. Yeah. So there's a big Noah. Oh, that's so cool! But it's all him sitting meditating. And Noah looks like Jesus, he's so it kind of he looks like he's he like Jesus. a meditation within himself, within himself. That is trippy and yeah. fabulous. Wow. So, and I've been trying to explore that side as well. Mm. You know, like just kind of creating a little, because I love the colors and I love yeah. the pop, <clears throat> but I also kind of like, well, like I want to explore over here. There's more well. to you than the colors and the pop. <laughs> I mean, I've had, actually, I had someone, um, Erica Blesnack, say that to me. Mm -hmm. uh, she's like, your, your photos are always so colorful. And she said, it was interesting. I, got, I had a photo shoot with Elliot Polinsky, mm -hmm. and he, it was much darker. I was going to say, it's very, <laughs> not dark, but, no. but definitely different. It's, it's Elliot's style, which is beautiful. It's Elliot's style. It's totally different. And she was like, Erica said she loved it because she's like, you are actually quite a subtle person. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the photos that you usually show are very in your face and bright and it doesn't, I feel like you're depicted more of the intricacy of you. Yeah, it looks very, like he got inside. Inner, like yeah. in, there's a German word, innig. It's literally like this idea of, yeah. And, and we, it was weird because we hadn't met before and he's a Gemini, and I don't really have a, a lot of Gemini friends. <laughs> and I have to say, I feel a little prejudiced. Yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm sorry, you guys. 
Those of you who are Geminis, I just, I don't know, I've had some rough experiences with people who are Gemini star signs, sun signs, so I'm, I'm, I, I own that, that's my own prejudice, I am prejudiced uh, <laughs> against, so anyway, that was interesting, but it turned, it worked, it worked, yeah, they're, beautiful. they're really neat. Um, then I broke my knee that night. That, like, I was walking, that was when Uranus, which is the planet that rules explosions, uh, um, electricity, lightning, earthquakes. Uranus moved into Taurus, which is the Earth, mm -hmm. the energy of Earth, and earthing and grounding, and my voice is even going talking about it. And when Uranus moved into Taurus, which is the energy of being in our bodies, my knee like totally popped. There were 50 billion earthquakes. The, the, the volcano erupted in Hawaii. Um, I mean, so much stuff happened. <coughs> Shit. Yeah. Um, I love astrology so much, but I also have to watch because sometimes I can get so excited and that I get, um, I flood myself with it and then I can't get a perspective like, this is actually, I, right now I'm sitting with a cat mm -hmm. and Joe and I don't have to think about the fact that Pluto is going to be intersecting with blah 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 in right. three months. And I think that's also another very Piscean kind of oh, trait. My wife is calling. Oh. oh. Hello, is it alright that you're on speaker? Sure. You, you're, you're in the episode You're in now. the episode Say now. Hi. Say hello. Hey, Mama. Yes. Ryan wants to know when he can go <laughs> Okay, hold on, everybody. Should we stay up here for a while? There's 26 more seconds until the timer okay, goes well, off. Oh, really? Is that... Oh, can you give us like 10 more minutes, though? Definitely. Okay. okay. I'm going to set the timer. Okay, thank you. Okay, Love you. Bye. Okay, bye bye. So that's really 10 minutes already? That was that was 11 minutes. Are we back right now? We're back. Oh, I, I can't believe the thing like isn't hot anymore. Okay, I'm timing well, it no, again. it's really more to stop it, and so we're pay so I'm paying attention. Oh, so okay. it doesn't so, just oh, stop right. on its own. Got it, got it, got it. Um, so we're back. We're back, and Joe, and I'm just telling Joe that also, you are a very hard worker, which we know. I think I mean, I think you are. You are very prolific. You mm. put out a lot of stuff. Even when, and you, you have two major transits that are happening right now. So I'm wondering how, Jupiter is in Scorpio for all of humanity right mm -hmm. now. And Saturn is in Capricorn also for all of humanity. So I feel like I'm wondering, are, are you feeling more um, interested in looking deeply inside yourself in the past, like, what, five or six months? I don't know, like, how I kind of feel like I've been looking deep inside myself forever. I know, that's true. That's part of your chart. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really, you're, you really won't know. Like, the last five different. or six months, it's been more of <laughs> oh. figuring out, like, and I don't know if this is going to come out the right way, the, what else to do? Oh. You know, like, I love photography. I love yeah. the videos. I love talking to people. But I know that there's more <clears throat> yeah. that I'm doing and will be doing and should be doing, you know? Yeah. There's more than just Joe Long or the photographer, you know? There's like this guy who wants to sit down and talk to people, and I just happen to know how to do that so I can do it. Yeah. You know? Are you about 42? 43. You're 43, yeah. And you're, that, that can be for some people like an age where you, like if you were a traditional, stereotypical straight man, you might go out and buy a new sports car. Mm -hmm. Um, but actually, you're trying to, it's like a, re, a death and a rebirth, a little, or you're trying to, that might be, mm -hmm. yeah, and you're like, what's, yeah. what, what is the next incarnation of my art, how I produce, how I make money, right. how All I live? That. And it's interesting because we were talking earlier about Bessela, a Vedic astrology friend yes. of mine, and also in my first reading that I had with her, she had said to me, and this was before 2012, because I hammered her on the whole 2012 stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, but she had said, you're never going to believe what you're doing when you're 40. And I wasn't doing this. Like, I wasn't, oh. I was taking pictures, but I wasn't living this life. Yeah. You know? Like, I, I had like... a normal, regular job. And <clears throat> for the did. longest time, yeah. I was an IT director at DeVry University. And then I went to a small software company. And then I did my Kundalini training. And that's when I was like, oh, I'm not living that life anymore. 
two weeks, two months into my Kundalini training, two months into this new job at the small software company, I just couldn't take it anymore. Wow! Yeah, I like quit. I was on vacation in Vermont. I was driving home. My boss called to yell at me for not getting back to enough emails. It's like I'm on vacation, and he kept going. And his name was Bill. If you happen to see this, Bill, thank you. Yeah. And I remember I was like, Bill, I love you, but I quit. I'm not doing this anymore. And he was like, well, what are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to be a photographer and teach yoga. I didn't have a client in the photography world, and I wasn't teaching any classes because I was still in my training. Yes. You know, and I just was you like, I, I quit. I can't do it. And he was like, all right, well, we'll talk when you bring everything back, or when you bring your laptop back. I'm like, I'm not bringing it back. I'll ship it. And everything at my desk throw away. Like, I'm never coming back. Wow. And now, that's, been, that's it. Well, that's how that I got into 2012? this. No, that was 2010, is when oh, I quit. Okay. Super Bowl Sunday, 2010. Which I think is really interesting for me because I played football in high school and college. Oh. And for that part of my life, I really identified as just being like a football player, just yeah. being an athlete like yeah. that. I didn't know any other way of being. Yeah. And then my college football coach was also my academic advisor, and he put me in a photography class that uh, I failed. Oh. Yeah. It was Friday at 3 o'clock, oh, so yeah. it was really hard to get to. So I failed that photography class. He called that summer and was like, dumbass, you failed. Like, yes. You lost your scholarship, so unless you come back to make up those credits, you don't have a scholarship anymore. And I went to bed that night. Well, I went out that night. I got very drunk with my friends, and I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, I've lost my scholarship. I don't want to go back. I came home, and at like 2 in the morning, there was a special on about the National Geographic Photographer. And I'm like, I really love that class, and I this I had no idea that there is more to life than just more to photography than just being like a portrait kind of photographer. Yeah. I went to bed that night, woke up the next morning. My parents were eating breakfast, and I'm like, I want to go to art school. Wow. Yeah. And this is the best, the best, the best. If any of you have watched this and you saw the episode with my mom, the first words out of my mom's mouth were like, Oh my goodness. You're not gay. You're an artist. Oh my God, that's amazing. And then really she was, cute. she was like, "Well, I would, we would love you anyway." But it makes so much sense because I used to have like, I used to have hair literally your haircut. I had. Really? Yeah, like I very, very blonde, shaved all around really? underneath. Really? Literally, Natalie's haircut I had. That's so great! I can't picture that. Probably 1996. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, your parents. But it was the cutest enough. thing. And she was like, it makes so much sense. You're an artist. You're an artist. You're not gay. Yeah. You are. You're sensitive. You're tender. You're in touch with your inner world. Yeah. That yeah. is rare. And then I jumped into this, to this world. To I know. I remember when you told me that you're a football player, that you used to be a football player. That really freaked me. I was like very shocked <laughs> to know that about you. Yeah, it was great. I was good. You, was were, good. you were skillful? Yeah. Skillful enough to get a scholarship. He's talented. To play. Talented football player. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Oh, someone's coming so, to visit hi, you. Come on up. So I feel I can talk to Natalie forever, um, but we're we're getting. I think that my baby actually is. I got his text. He's ready for bed. He's ready for bed. So we're wrapping things up. Where can everyone find you? Oh, um, if you're on Facebook, please friend me, Natalie Levin, or you can like my business page, Natalie Levin Yoga Opera Glitter. I'll link it. I'll put yeah, it. Yeah, link it in and then Instagram, Natalie Levin Yoga Opera Glitter. And are you going to be anywhere very soon? Uh, yeah, at Tara Yoga on July 4th. July 4th. I don't know if this will be out by July 4th. Oh, okay. Because um, um, I'm trying to keep Natalie to the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yoga Home on July 22nd, uh, um, celebrating Leo and also going inward because July, we probably will really need to go inward. Just. Just a heads Just up. A heads up. Go in, in go, go in and then I put it asking people one little thing if you can give the folks out there a little piece of like inspiration if someone wants to be a weirdo like us <laughs> but they're afraid how to keep people moving in the directions uh, of their dreams bliss any little nugget of um we're always the universe is for us the planets are for us there's no bad or good transit. We are, we are coming from this incredible, blissful love 
that we only get a glimpse of, like when Joe is holding this cat, Pidgey, it's like this nanosecond of the utter expansive love that is always around us. So that helps me when I'm like, I don't want to live anymore. Oh wait, I'm a part of this. No, no words, words are not. Thank you so much for having chicken with me, for being up for my crazy ideas. I put the photos uh, that we made. My wife was the artistic director. Yeah, sure. I was a great artistic director. It was awesome. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for, so for doing much. this. I, uh, I love you, my beautiful friends. I love friends. you. This I'm so is thrilled great. to know you. Um, thank you all for watching, and I will see you, I guess, tomorrow. <laughs> Awesome. Yes. Yay. Everyone can come down. <laughs> Pidgey.